guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Alyssa. I am a 24 year old first time mom and my son Reese is three and a half months old. So we have officially outgrown the newborn stage. And so this is kind of a part two or a follow up to my original video where I posted my newborn essentials. If you haven't seen that, I'll make sure to link it in the cards above. But these are my newborn regrets, things that I wish I hadn't registered for, things I haven't found a use for, or things that I did register for, used, and wish that I had chosen or I have now bought something different. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So my first newborn regret, and I honestly didn't think I would have a regret about this one, is the My Breast Friend pillow. I have the Platinum, it's their newest one on the line. I regret buying the My Breast Friend pillow because I didn't find it very easy to use. And what I mean by that is I would prefer you choose to get the boppy pillow which i ended up getting both because the boppy pillow is able to be used for tummy time assist with sitting up and nursing whereas when you have the my breast friend pillow it's pretty much just a nursing pillow it's not very multifunctional but the issues i ran into is it has if you can see like two raised parts of the pillow and that's supposed to kind of give head support if you prefer i believe it's called the cradle hold I ended up really preferring the football hold when I was nursing Reese and so there's this way you can kind of get away with it but this way you can't. In my opinion it wasn't very comfortable to kind of do that football hold so it kind of limited me in my abilities of how I wanted to nurse and I also found it kind of cumbersome to get into like the back support great loved it the boppy doesn't have that but when it was 3 a.m and i was trying to nurse the baby it was like hold on dakota hold the baby so i can get situated hook myself up fix myself whereas with the boppy you can literally just shove it under there and go so i recommend if you have to choose between the two go with the boppy and then use like one of your like bed pillows or throat pillows that you keep on your couch as kind of like back support it serves like almost the same purpose as this but the boppy's cheaper and it has more functions you can use out of it so don't make the same mistake of getting both just go with the boppy my second newborn regret is the hatch rest mini now don't get me wrong i love the product itself we use it every day for reese's naps and for nighttime because he has been sleeping through the night and in his crib since seven weeks and so my main gripe about this situation is I chose to get this model because I didn't care for like the night light or the clock ones. They have three different ones in their lineup and I just chose the basic one because I cared about having the option to use it for my phone where you can control it from a different room and it would just serve as a basic sound machine. The problem with this though is you cannot set it for a certain time. Like for example, I was expecting to be able to, through my app, set a timer where it comes on at 7.30 when Reese goes to bed and it turns off at 7.30 in the morning when he wakes up. You can't do that. You have to manually turn it on and turn it off every time. And like, that's no problem. I'll still continue to use it. But I think in the future, if we have another child that requires a sound machine, I'll spend the money to get the one where it has the option to go ahead and set those timers just solely for the convenience factor. So if you're like me and you kind of just prefer to set it and forget it, choose the next one up in the lineup. Don't go for the mini because it doesn't have the timer option. My third newborn regret is Hello Bello diapers. Now, if you have watched any of my previous hauls, I've raved about Hello Bello. We love them. We still use their wipes. We use their diaper cream. We use their shampoo and bubble bath and body wash at bath time. Great company, love the things. I didn't enjoy their diapers. Reese would constantly have blowouts in these. Like every single diaper change was a blowout. Full outfit, full new onesie, new diaper, everything. It was bad. And so no matter what we did, we tried folding down the back, we tried puffing up the sides more, we tried sizing up, we tried changing him extra, extra often and nothing helped. So I don't know if it was just the brand or it didn't work for Reese's body shape, but the diapers were no bueno for our household. And so we have since switched diapers. Reese is now rocking size three diapers, which is crazy. He's getting huge. And we have solved the issues for blowouts and we have solved the issues for overnight leaking. So make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be doing another video of different diapers that we've tried and what we have found works best to solve those issues. So I don't necessarily recommend the Hello Bella diapers. And the reason that this is a problem is because at our gender reveal, we had people bring diapers and wipes. And so a lot of people 
brought the Hello Bello diapers because I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. And the problem with this is I am a frequent Target shopper and Hello Bello is exclusive to Walmart. So I knew that if he didn't like these, I could exchange the brand for a different type when I go to the store, but it's kind of a hassle because I had to always go specifically to Walmart to do that and that was the only thing I was doing there. So I would have chosen a brand where I knew that if I needed to exchange because he had a reaction or I didn't like them, I could do it at like Target, if that makes sense. Again, a convenience thing, but it really made a difference where we had like 20 boxes of diapers and I had to continuously exchange and you can only exchange so many at a time at Walmart because you don't have a receipt, which I don't think Target has a cap. So I'm not the biggest fan for Hello Bello. So if you're going to go ahead and do like a diaper raffle or things like that, make sure that you choose a brand of diapers that will exchange at the store you frequently shop at. My fourth newborn regret, and this is for the people that are currently looking to build registries or are building their registry, we chose to register at Babylist, and I don't think I would register at Babylist again for any future children. I think I would just do Amazon or Bye Bye Baby or Target. If you're not familiar with Babylist, it's like a universal baby website. And so you can register from a whole bunch of different places and you can just put it in one location and people can shop there. Now imagine if you had an in-person baby shower that probably would work out really well. People just go on there and then they bring the gifts to their shower. Well, we had Reese in the middle of COVID and so we opted to cancel our baby shower just to keep everybody kind of safe. And so we ended up doing a baby shower by mail and we were so, fortunate to have so many family and friends that supported us and still were so excited to send gifts and support us as we welcomed Reese. But the problem with that is Babylist doesn't give an option for you to send directly to the registrar. Now let me explain. So when you have a registry at Amazon and you go to purchase a gift off of there, it checks it off like, yep, someone bought something off of your registry. And then you have two options. It'll auto populate saying, do you wanna to send to Alyssa and Dakota's house directly? And they just check the box and you go, or do you wanna to send to your home address? Now we were having a lot of gifts sent to us and Babylist didn't have that option. So when people were like checking out on like Amazon and stuff like that through Babylist, it didn't populate to send to our address. So like, 20 people sent to their home addresses and they're like oh my god i forgot to send it to your address which is totally fine like it wasn't a big deal but we did spend a lot of time and energy coordinating when to meet up with people going and picking up gifts and things like that it kind of in a sense was counterproductive to avoiding seeing people because of covid and so in the future it, i wish that baby list would make a option where you can just directly send to the participants household if you're buying from an external website like target or amazon or things like that so simply for ease of everybody whether it be the sender or the receiver i think that i'll choose to just register at one place where like everyone can just check off the box and it's it's just easier from the get-go. So food for thought, Babyless is great if you have a bunch of things, maybe from like small shops, but most of ours came from Amazon, Target, and Babylist, and Bye Bye Baby. And so I probably could have just condensed it and just chosen to do one place and it would have been a lot easier on everybody's part. My next newborn regret is these liners. So we have the Kikaru peanut changer. It is fantastic. If you are pregnant and you're like, what changing pad do I get? Get the Kikaru. It doesn't stain. It hasn't stained for us. You can easily just wipe off the poop. It's a nice silicone wipeable material. And I think this was probably like a first time mom purchase because of the fact that I saw other people do it. But basically they're just like, little liners you can put on top of the Kikaru and that way it's not like cold if the baby lays down on it at night and I was like oh my gosh I don't want Reese to be cold and he would always get like poop on it or something like that even when you tried your best to keep it from going on the changing table so these puppies were like constantly in the wash and it wasn't the issue of having to wash them because I was already doing laundry all the time. It was a matter of just constantly having to like swap it out. And Dakota's like, where's the liner? I'm like, oh, it's in the hamper. And so I think going in the future, we probably just wouldn't do this. We stopped using these probably when Reese turned like a month, a month and a half old. And ever since then, he's just been on the straight like silicone material of the Kikaru and he's just gotten used to it. I think he's just gotten used to it. It's a little bit cooler. It's not crazy cold, but it makes our life so much easier because when you accidentally are taking off the diaper and a little bit of poop or something or pee gets out, you just wipe it up and you don't have to worry about replacing anything or putting it in the hamper. So I regret buying the liners. 
you can always probably too like if you really were concerned about your baby being cold throw like a burp cloth or something down when you lay them down when they're super young and that way it's kind of multifunctional and you're not having to go and spend extra money buying liners my next new one regret is this electric nail file this is probably a bougie purchase because i know that all of my seasoned moms out there are like Heck no, just bite those fingernails off or clip them or whatever. But a lot of people raved about, don't worry about cutting the baby's nails because it's so scary, get the electric nail files. And so I was like, okay, like I'll totally do that. The problem I faced with it is every time I went to use it on Reese's nail, even now, like at three and a half months old, it like chips at his nails. I think that they're just not strong enough to handle this. No matter how slow of a setting I choose, I'm using the softest like attachment that they have and it just didn't work. And so like he never cried or fussed, but like I just didn't like the way it dug into his nails. I was like, that can't be comfortable in the long run. I haven't even really continued to use it because I was like, it's not gonna work properly. It's like chipping off his nails. And so we just kind of bit the bullet and we got a nail file and I'm still too scared to clip his nails. So my lovely sister and dad will do it because they're willing to brace it. Dakota and I are like, we don't want to hurt him. And like, that's crazy. But like, don't get the electric nail file, at least not the one I got because it's just too rough. I think if you have like a one or a two year old where their nails are a little bit harder, it's harder to get them to sit still to clip their nails. This might work out well, but I think as far as like the newborn stage goes, it's just too aggressive for their like frail little fingers. My next newborn regret is actually our playpen, pack and play, whatever you choose to call it. So we ended up getting the four moms playpen. I got it off of Facebook marketplace for like $40 and it was quite the steal. Highly recommend you always check out Facebook Marketplace because people will literally sell mint condition things and for like dirt cheap. Like if you check out my Instagram, I got Reese's Activity Center, which is usually like $130 for $8. And the baby never used it that I bought it from. So it was like, you can find steel prices, like crazy good prices. So make sure you check out Facebook Marketplace. But I will say that even though I did get my playpen for $40, it is a hassle to carry and transport. Now we plan to use our playpen for when we go to my parents' house or my sister's house. And so you want something that's easy to carry and easy to set up. It definitely checks the box for easy to set up. It's super easy. It literally just is like a one pull system and you push down and the whole thing pops open. You're not having to like connect things and do anything crazy. Really easy to set up. Four moms is a 10 out of 10 in that category. But it is very heavy. I think it's like, 25 pounds or right around there and like that doesn't sound like a lot but it is big and it is bulky and it is heavy like i dread having to carry it from the car into the house and then pack it back up and carry it from the house back into the car it's just it wasn't convenient for us i was like regretting and dreading having to go ahead and just bring it with us even though we did need it and so i did a lot of research and i found one by the brand baby joy at a really affordable price in my opinion as far as like play pens and pack and plays can go and it works great it is not identical to the system of just like the middle part where you just push down of a four mom's play pen but it just has like four legs so you just click into place and you go like setup is less than like 10 seconds and it weighs like i think under 10 pounds so it is so compact so lightweight so easy to set up and i honestly think it's pretty good quality like the mattress is a little bit thicker than like the standard ones you usually get so if you're looking for a play pen that is carry friendly lightweight easy to set up comfortable go with the baby joy one i'll make sure i link it down below for you guys it's crazy good i'm surprised i've never heard anybody else talk about it but hopefully if you get it too you'll tell your mom friends and save everybody the hassle of getting very expensive heavy play pens my next newborn regret is swaddles okay I think probably everybody that has ever seen any newborn regret video has seen somebody talk about swaddles. And I took note of that because I watched a lot of newborn essentials and newborn regrets when I was building my registry. And so I was like, reel it in Alyssa because people will be like, yeah, I had 20 swaddles and we didn't use them. I'm like, well, no shit. Of course you didn't use that many. So I got a four pack of the muslin swaddles and then I purchased the swaddle up and the MB Swaddle. Now these two I got for when Reese was like a newborn because I knew I wasn't gonna go with like the traditional muslin swaddle. I have like a fear of like him unburritoing himself and suffocating in his sleep. That's definitely like the anxiousness in myself. So I knew I wasn't gonna use these for sleep, but Reese ended up like rolling over on his side like randomly at like five days old and it gave me like the biggest like panic attack scare. And so I was deathly afraid 
to put him back in one of the swaddles because I was like, what if he rolls over and then falls into space and then dies? Like nobody talks about bringing your baby home, like fear of death anxiety. Like it was crazy. Like I couldn't sleep when I brought him home for, I would just stare at him while he slept to make sure he was breathing. Like it was, it was quite like scary. Like nobody ever really talks about it either, but yeah, I was definitely afraid of him dying, especially since you always hear about SIDS, it's like on the back of your mind, but like when you have your baby in front of you, you're like, oh my God, like now I'm really worried. So we didn't end up using these. So these I don't regret buying, not for like their lack of use, but I will say that we just didn't have a need for them. I suppose I could have just bought one and then we would have been good and we could have gone from there depending on which one he liked, but we didn't. And so I have these two for maybe future children if I find myself less anxious but I don't think you need to kind of get both and see Amazon Prime delivers in like two days. So if you found your baby didn't like one, they're not sleeping those first couple days anyways. And so you could probably just wait, save the money and get the one you actually do like. As for the muslin swaddles, I have never used these. Um, we ended up getting a small like muslin blanket that's about, I don't know, like three feet by three feet. It just stays rolled up at the bottom of our diaper bag. And I prefer that compared to these. These are kind of more thin, and so these kind of just work better if you're looking maybe for that stretch to wrap them around, whereas that one's slightly thicker. So it works better for like a burp cloth, a spot to lay the baby, can be a blanket, something to throw over his car seat, different things like that. And so I found that that was more useful and multifunctional than the really thin, like actual like jumbo muslin swaddles. So if you're not planning to burrito wrap your children, like I was and I knew for a fact I was gonna do like the zipper, the Velcro swaddles if I was gonna use one, you can probably just skip registering for like the muslin ones entirely. Just get the one muslin blanket that I'll link down below for you and it'll just serve the purpose for everything that you could possibly need all in one. It's cheaper and it takes up less room with the blanket storage that you're probably hoarding in your nursery at this point. For my next newborn regret, it's actually on its way back to Amazon. Um, we ended up having to supplement Reese with formula and we're now living off of like the breast milk frozen stash that I have. And so we ended up getting a bottle warmer. We have the glass Dr. Brown bottles and we love them, 10 out of 10. We also chose to get their Dr. Brown's bottle warmer and it just did not work well for us. I followed the rules about washing it routinely. I think you had to use distilled water. I bought the distilled water and I used it and it still grew mold. Like it was crazy. Like I just, obviously you don't feel comfortable heating up your baby's bottle in a moldy bottle warmer, especially when like you follow their directions. That's like, I did what I was supposed to do. I don't know why it didn't work for us. And so we've returned that. And Reese is really good about drinking formula and room temperature water, cold water, warm water. Like he doesn't have a preference because we've always mixed it up since he was younger. And so we returned it and we're not probably gonna get another bottle warmer. I think that if you, for us, it worked for us where we just kind of were always alternating and changing the temperature slightly. So he wasn't just accustomed to one solid temperature where he relied on that warm bottle you don't need the bottle warmer, at least we don't. And so I regret buying the Dr. Brown's bottle warmer because it molded and that's disgusting when you're thinking about your newborn baby. And so hopefully if somebody else maybe has like a good recommendation for a bottle warmer that has worked from them, drop it in the comments below for anybody that might be looking because we're done with bottle warmers. It definitely freaked me out. I'm, I'm not a fan of mold, obviously. Next, I regret buying the Newborn Essentials Medicine Kit. I think it was like $20 or so and I got it from Amazon. We have yet to use it. It came with like samples of like gripe water, Tylenol, gas drop, and we've never used them. I have a specific diaper cream that I use for Hello Bello. We've never used gas drops. We've never had to use gripe water. And when we did need to use some Tylenol, coming back from the doctor's appointment, I was weird and I was like, no, like he's in so much pain. Like I want the actual Tylenol brand, like totally craziness. But I was just like, I've yet to really use any of those products. I suppose they're good to have on hand if you really needed them. But I think you could honestly just get away with like getting one bottle of Tylenol that you probably want to use when your baby gets some shots and then that's it. And then you can always kind of gear if you think once you kind of run into the problem of maybe we should try gripe water, maybe we should try gas drops, then go and get them. Because I kind of just like plan for like an apocalyptic situation where I never be able to go and buy anything. And it's like, Alyssa, you're being crazy. Like you totally could have just drove down the street 10, 15 minutes to go to a, a Walgreens and grab those things. So I don't think you need them. I think Tylenol is a good staple to have on hand 
because your baby will be getting shots at two months, four months, things like that. And it really did help Reese when he was uncomfortable. But I don't think you need everything that came in the kit and it just sits in Reese's dresser drawer. So food for thought, make your decision if you prefer to have it on hand. But I think that if you don't need it, you don't have to have it in that dresser. My next newborn regret is actually like a little like water temperature thermometer I got off of Amazon. It was like a little seal and it like floats around, tells you if the water's too hot or too cold. It ended up not working like a good like three to four weeks after we got it, it just like died. So don't get the seal thermometer from Amazon. It just didn't work for us. Ironically, we've just been using our like Frida baby thermometer. It's for like rectal armpit and mouth and we've never had to use it but we just like dab it in there really quick at the tip to check the water temperature and it's worked fine i mean we've definitely been using it for a good two months at this point every single night at bath time because reese does get a bath for his part of his nighttime routine but it, it's worked out fine for us so if anybody does have any actual recommendations of this is a really good water thermometer to use in the bathtub make sure you share because i really when you go on amazon like there's really mixed reviews and everyone's like this is great and then half the reviews are like this was terrible the seal for us was terrible so we're still in search of a better way to check water temperature for his baths for another newborn regret, me and Dakota kind of were duking it out on this one. He doesn't think it's a regret. I do think it's a regret. So kind of take what you want from this. But I regret getting the Baby Bjorn newborn carrier, the mini. And he says it works fine. So I wasn't really sure if I was going to be a super big baby wearer. That's why I didn't go and get like one of the wrap ones. Just because I didn't want to have that and not use it. Whereas I knew for a fact we'd probably end up taking the structure type carriers when we go out and do different things. I just didn't know are we going to be more in the carrier or put him more in the stroller. So far we've definitely used the carrier more than our upper baby. Just because I think it's easier to navigate with a carrier. You don't have to worry about pushing a stroller through shops and different things like that. But we recently used that carrier when we went to Newport for a couple days and my back was killing me. Like Dakota had to end up wearing him a lot. Like I just felt like it didn't have a lot of support. Reese is kind of heavy, but it's designed for babies up to 12 months and he's only three and a half. The problem I have with that carrier is they have some that clip around the back to give that back support, whereas this one does so it's like right behind your shoulder blades and he just leans forward so you feel like you have a hunchback and your back just kills you. Dakota claims it's because I have a weak back but I think that I really would choose a different carrier going forward. I have found one that I think if I was gonna do it it's actually not like a super common one like I feel like you always hear about Ergo Babies, Lily Baby, Baby Bjorn. This one's actually by Gronzy and it's right around $50, it's a steal. But everybody in the comments has raved about it. The difference with this carrier is it has like, they have those like hip carriers where you can like attach it on your hip and just like carry a baby around. It has that and the actual carry part of it. So it's like extra secure and extra support for your back. And so I think I would do that if I was gonna get a different carrier. So definitely check it out. I'll link it below. I Dakota says we don't need it, but I honestly might get it because like I don't use our baby Bjorn carrier every time we have to baby wear now, Dakota wears it. And I'm thinking like in the future, okay, well, what happens when you're not here and I do need to baby wear? Like I don't wanna use that. So definitely if you're looking at baby carriers, look at one that has good back support. I thought it was kind of a given, but people in the reviews were always talking about, I love this so much, it's so great. And I'm just like, I feel like it doesn't have the proper back support. They do have some other ones in their lineup that does have better back support, but they are like double the price. So you kind of have to weigh the two. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna go ahead and get the brand name one and go with that and try it out. Or do I just try like the non-brand name one and see if it works? Cause sometimes those are like the best finds. So I will keep you updated if I end up going for that, but I definitely regret not getting a carrier that has better back support. And then my final newborn regret is about clothing. Now I'm sure everybody who's also seen a newborn regret video has heard somebody talk about clothing and I don't necessarily regret a lot about my clothing because I chose to be very intentional about the clothing I was buying. I know a lot of times people go like crazy and just get a ton of outfits. Like I got like one or two newborn like going out outfits that were like literally like a one piece without the hoodies. So it like is a step up. But what I do regret is not realizing like, I think that my style of what I prefer to put Reese in changed a little bit. I would always like, you know, see something in the store and I'm like, oh, that's cute, I like that. Or I'd find it thrifting and I liked that. 
but Reese literally lives in bubble rompers 24 seven. Like every single day he's in a bubble romper. If you are looking for cute neutral clothes, check out Winnie and Crew, they just dropped some new ones and I'll be showing you the new ones that I got. You can use code Alyssa15 to save 15% off. But I prefer them. They're a one piece, they're super cute. They're more intentional than just like a basic white onesie. You don't have to worry about pants and shirts and everything like that. So I wish that I had kind of held back a little bit and waited until the baby was born to kind of feel out what my vibe was gonna be. I thought I was gonna like a lot of like the little two piece where it's like the bubble shorts and then like a shirt with it, but I actually just prefer the one piece. It's way easier and I like the look better. So if you can, I know it's hard, try and refrain from getting your clothes until you've had your baby for a couple weeks when they're obviously just living in footies and then kind of see what you think you might like and what's easiest for you. It'll save you some time. I had a lot of clothes that I got and I ended up just donating them because Reese didn't wear them. And it wasn't because it wasn't my style or I just got too many. It's just he rotated through the same like five or six outfits and I was content and happy with that. So just food for thought. All right guys, that about does it for my newborn regrets. I don't have too many and some were just pretty much tweaks here and there, but I hope this helps you if you are building your registry and you're kind of looking for suggestions of what to get or what not to get. If you were like me and you were kind of navigating some mistakes while you've already had your child, I hope this gives you some alternatives. Make sure you check out my other videos too. It's kind of different clothes you can get, different essentials and things like that as I navigate my way through parenthood. As always, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help my channel out. Turn on those post notifications so you do get notified when I post a new video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.